Hi everyone, Harry Frank from Red Giant here. In this tutorial, we're going to continue our studies on the particle section within Trap Code Particular. Specifically, we'll be taking a look at the use of custom particles, how to choose particles from the particular library, and how to control the timing of your particles in relation to the time of your source material. So like I often say, there's a lot to cover here, so let's jump right in. So far in this series, we've been talking a lot about particles that are generated right within particular. Sprites and textured polygons refer to the use of pictures or movies that we can assign to our particle types. In an example like this with this smoke, we can use a looping smoke clip found right within the Trapcode Particular library, assign that to a particle to make a very detailed kind of smoke. So let's just run through how to do that. So I'll create a new composition. create a solid, and I'll drop Particular right onto my solid. Now being that we're focusing mostly on the particles and not so much about the motion, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail on setting up the emitter settings, but I'll set this to a directional emitter and I'll point this up. I'm not worrying about exact values here, I'm just going to kind of point this upward, and I'll spread out the overall direction spread. So we're making kind of a upward floating smoke. Maybe I'll turn the velocity up just a little bit. OK, so more importantly, let's jump to the particle section here. So if I go to the particle type, I can set this to a sprite. Setting this to sprite means that we're going to use some sort of external media, assign that media to each particle. What that media is and how it's assigned to the particle is found right here in the texture section. Now you can manually do this. I can take some sort of clip drag it in here, go to the texture section, and manually define that as my particle. However, there's a quicker way to do this, especially if you'd like to browse the built-in particular library. And we can do that by clicking the Choose Sprite button, and this will launch a window. And we have a number of subcategories in here of things ranging from motion graphics, 2D shapes, as well as the smoke and fire section. So I'll select Smoke Loop 2 here. And as we can see, it's a bit small, so I'll turn this particle size up, let's say to 125. And right away, we can see a bit of a problem. The source material of Smoke Loop 2 does not include an alpha channel. Some of these do, because there is just no way to get around it. But if it is something like this, where we simply want to take the darker areas and turn those into transparency, we didn't include the alpha channel just to save on overall space. We can simply unmult this or turn that dark area into transparency by going to the bottom of the particle section and turning unmult on. Now, unmult is different than the blend mode. Right now, they still have a normal blend mode, so the particles, even though we have some transparency, are not blending with each other in terms of their color. So if I go to the blend mode section and set this to something like lighten or screen, we will have the particle colors blending with each other. Now, I think for smoke, you can probably lower the overall opacity and maybe even randomize it a bit. I think this is getting pretty close, but one thing you'll probably notice is that out on the fringes of the end of the animation, as the particles reach the end of their lifespan, which is a default of three seconds, particles such as this one right here, when they reach the end of their lifespan, they simply disappear, and that is not ideal. So we'll want to go to the opacity over life, and just pull up some sort of graph that will have these fade out over time. We could have them scale over time, but for smoke, I don't think that's really ideal. Another thing I think we should do is go to the rotation section and turn up the random rotation to kind of scatter the angles of each of these smoke clips. So if we run a quick preview on this, we'll see we have a nice little spreading detailed smoke. One thing I didn't do, if you're paying attention closely, you can see at the very bottom where the particles are generated, they are kind of popping on. So 
it's up to you aesthetically how you'd like to address that. If it doesn't matter and it's perhaps obscured by the source or whatever you're compositing this with. But in this case, maybe we could either fade it on or scale it on. So I can go in here to the scale over life. I'll just grab one of these points on the B spline. And now this will have the particle scale on over time instead of doing its hard cut on that it was doing before. I think that works a lot better. Also looking at these as they kind of overlap with each other, I think the opacity pr could probably come down just a little bit. And I think that smooths out the base of the particle emitter quite a bit. So I think that makes for a really nice looking smoke. So that's a good introduction to using custom particles. Now I'd like to switch this over to a very different approach, which is creating explosive behaviors, such as this little explosion kind of design right here. So I'll create a composition here. Create a solid and drop particular on it. Now, I've covered this before, but this might have been a long time ago for you. In the emitter section, we have two different options here for how particles generate. They can generate continuously, or they can explode, which is generate on one frame and then have the particles per second immediately go to zero. Now, you'll see that our default setting of 100 particles per second means that we are generating particles for just one frame at 100 particles per second. So to get those visible particles up, we really need to increase the particles per second quite a bit. I'm going to go to the particle section here, switch this to a sprite, and go to choose sprite. And now I'm going to choose something that is not looping. So I'm going to use a fire explosion. I can use, let's say, fire explosion 2. So I'll bring up the particle size, and again, we see that we've got a black frame around the particle type, so I'll go into Unmult, turn that on, and also set the screen mode to blend so that the fire is actually blending together. Now, in our previous design with the smoke loop, our source media had a seamless loop. The first frame and the last frame were actually identical, so we could loop it over and over. With this fire explosion, if I solo this and just kind of play through this source material, we have a beginning, a middle, and then it fades out at the end as sort of a smoky dissolve away. In this case, we don't want it to pick a random frame and loop over and over through the source material. We want it to start at the beginning and play all the way to the end. So instead of using random loop, we can go to one of these options right here, which is start at birth, play once. Now, this is going to kind of work, but there's some different considerations that we need to make here. So as I play through this, you'll see that all of the particles are playing through the media at the same time, which isn't quite ideal. That was one of the reasons with the smoke loop that we were able to create something realistic because each particle was starting at a different time in the source media. So as we can see here, we've got everything playing at exactly the same time. Now there's a few different ways to fix this. As we've talked about, we can use rotation to kind of mix things up, turn up the random rotation. And that is one way, and I'll definitely leave that on. But there's a different time sampling method that's really going to work well for us here. So let's take a look at a couple things here. We have our particle life, which is set to 3 seconds, and our source material goes to 4 seconds. So even though this has a nice little dissolve at the end, we're never actually going to see that dissolve because the particle lifespan stops short at 3 seconds. So this is why start at birth play once is close but not quite exactly what we want. We want to set this to something called start at birth stretch. What this will do is take the source material, regardless of its length, and map that to the lifespan of each particle, even if it's randomized. So let's say I add a little bit of randomization here. Now Particular will map this 4 second source material and compress that time within the lifespan of the particle. Not only does this add a little bit of randomness depending on your life random, but this will also play all the way through to the end of that source material. 
Now, generally, with this kind of clip, you don't need a whole lot of velocity. You don't need these fire bursts all flying away from the center at a rapid rate. In fact, you can probably keep the velocity pretty small and go to the particle section and really kind of get that particle size as high as you think it might need to go. This kind of works, but it does feel a little bit slow motion to me. So fortunately, it's very easy for me to lower the overall particle lifespan because it's going to be stretched to the lifespan of the particle. Now, just to show this as an example, this fire clip actually has its own color that seems to work pretty well. Some of the presets that you'll find in the designer take some of these clips and actually colorize them. To do that, you would want to switch this from sprite to sprite colorize. And this will take the color from that source clip and remove it and allow us to tint that clip another color. To show an example of this, I'll load the preset under the multi-system presets section under explosions and use this one right here, which is called shot grenade. So there's a custom particle going on here for system four. It's using a custom particle with a fire explosion, but it's being set to sprite colorize, and therefore we can take that, that particle and assign a different color to it. Okay, so I'm going to create one more type of explosion, and we're going to focus on a different type of time sampling. Now, to save on time here, I'll just duplicate one of these compositions. We'll call this debris explosion. And I will reset the settings in here. Okay, so we'll go to the emitter section, set this to explode, and turn up the particles per second. Let's say I set this to 2000 and turn up the overall velocity. So I'll go to the particle section, we'll switch this to a sprite, and I'll go to the sprite library, and we'll go to the dust and debris section this time. I'm looking at this one right here, glass bits sequence, uh, let's see, one or two, I'll just pick one of these. And if we look at this sequence, it's simply a number of glass bits that are random from one frame to the next. So this is a QuickTime movie, but each of the frames is different, so we want to randomly sample each of these frames. So I'll turn up the size. And maybe give it some size random as well. And if we play through this, we'll see that it's not quite doing exactly what we want. So it's taking each particle and using that default setting of a random loop and looping through each of the frames. And we don't want that. We want it random, but we want to have it randomly pick a still frame. Now with this set to random still frame, we'll see each of the particles is different. We've added a little bit of size random as well. But now we have lots of different little glass bits in there. I think these probably could have actually a little bit smaller of a size. I think for debris explosions like this, you also might want to go in and turn up some of the, the rotation speed. Remember, a little bit goes a long way. One is one full revolution per second. And we probably want some randomness to that as well. Now at the very beginning, we prob... Oops, and also I have the source material still turned on, but also at the beginning I probably want to have the particles maybe size up over their lifespan just so that they kind of start from nothing we probably would want some more velocity random to this as well. So let's jump over to another example where we're going to use textured polygons. So in this case, I have a particle source here, which is just a couple different letters, just A, B, and C. And this is generated within After Effects, and we're assigning that to our particle source. So the really the main difference between using a sprite and a textured polygon is really that three-dimensional orientation. So if I go to the particle section and we say use a textured polygon, this allows us to randomly rotate in X, Y, and Z. If I change this from textured polygon colorize to sprite colorize, you'll notice that these all snap to particles that are flat to the camera. 
if I set this to textured polygon, colorize, we'll see that using a bit of random rotation randomly rotates in all three axes. And because I've set this to textured polygon colorize, I can vary the colors of these over their life. I can say randomly choose a color from the gradient and pick a uh, preset. So again, we're using a random still frame in this example. So it's randomly picking A, B, or C. So what if we wanted a specific order to our particles? So if we wanted to move in the order of the alphabet or perhaps uh, a text example. So to do this, I'll jump to one more example here. And I'm not going to set up the particle source just because I just copied some uh, text in here, but this example is just one long composition and each frame is a different letter and it's actually just spelling out some random sample text. In the case of particular where we want to use those particles in a very specific order, there is a time sampling method very unique to this which is called current frame freeze. Current frame freeze will grab that media at that point in time and then freeze it at that point in time and each particle will be assigned at that given time, and I think that is pretty cool. And I think that about wraps it up for this lesson. My name is Harry Frank for Red Giant. We'll see you in the next lesson.